in the presence of the Lord, who had manifested all those signs and wonders, ten in Egypt, so that his power would be made known, the God of the universe's power would be made known to the God of the world, to show that every kingdom of the world has to pass away and bow down to the kingdom of Christ. But the Israelites got afraid. Because what they saw contradicted what God called them to believe. Mm. So God says, no, don't stand still paralyzed by fear. That's not of me. Mm. The first point that we have to be aware of as Christians today is this. If we're going to be successful in effecting a parting of the ways, we must rest ourselves from our own spiritual schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Now I say that because we always forget the fact that the crowd or the multitude that left Egypt was a mixed crowd. It wasn't just Hebrews who departed with the children of Israel. It was a mixed multitude. You can read that in Exodus. Well, we'll go there real quick. We'll go there real quick. Exodus 12, verses 37 and 38. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were, were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, mm. and flocks, and herds, even very much cattle. So, when the Egyptian crowd comes upon the children of Israel, wedged in by the sea and the land, some of the mixed multitude saw some of their family members. Mm -hmm. They saw some people they used to mm. eat with. Mm -hmm. They saw some people they used to fellowship with. They saw some people they used to revel with. Mm. In short, they saw some people they agreed with. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. That really needs to sink in. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> the multitude was one body. One body. Mm -hmm. With two different opinions mm -hmm. battling within it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can say the same thing about many of us in the room. In fact, mm -hmm. all of us in the room. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just cause us to reflect on the manifestations of sin, of which clubbing and sleeping around and drug using and pimping and whoring and all that other stuff are manifestations. It speaks to the fact that if we're going to affect a part of the ways, we have to get right down to the bare bones of our intentions. Our intentions. You know, see, you can do bad with the full intention of doing bad. You can also do good with the full intention of doing good. But you can also do good with the wrong intention. <clears throat> see, if we're going to be people of integrity, it means that the purity of our hearts has to begin with the purity of our intention. And that purity has to follow through everything we think say, and do. Mm. Anything else is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. so that's why Jesus says, anyone who looks on a woman to lust after her has mm. already committed adultery with her in his heart. Mm. Mm. Do we look on sin that way? That it's possible to fellowship one with another, to sing praises to God, to quote scripture, 
to look all pious and pseudo-sanctimonious without getting down to the bare bone minimums of our intention. Mm. I'm going to come in here and look great today, and then as soon as I leave the, 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 the fellowship, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> that's what we do every day. <laughs> that's exactly what we do every day. Spiritual schizophrenia will always be spiritual schizophrenics if we don't recognize that sin begins with our intentions. <clears throat> we have to get out of what we see and live by faith. Amen. The second point <clears throat> is this. If we're going to be effective in creating a parting of the ways, we have to understand that this is the mentality we should adopt. And it is this. We should be willing to fail at something that will ultimately exist ultimately succeed rather than to succeed at something that will ultimately fail. I'll say that again. We must be willing to fail at something that will ultimately succeed and to succeed at something that will ultimately fail. Mm. <clears throat> See, let's go back to the Red Sea. Let, let's put on our Israelite hats for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay? The people who had enslaved your forefathers for 430 years, mm -hmm. whose might you saw day in and day out, whose richness and wealth and opulence you were exposed to day in and day out, whose military might had conquered most of the known world at that time. They were the world power. These were your masters. They're coming to take you back. <coughs> we can say that, oh no, I mean, I'm under the new covenant now, so I, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to trust God. I, I'm going I'm to believe God. Let's be real. <laughs> Somebody comes, comes up to us. The FBI and said, I'm coming to get you. It's been told that you're harboring some drugs or something with some guns or something. You could be afraid. Because we're the world power now. And if they come to our doors, which they will eventually. Let's be real. I mean, it's not as easy as saying. So if we're there, and we see them coming. <laughs> we think that our exodus from Egypt represents a failure. God, what did you deliver us for? Or to? Death? <laughs> That's great when we get to it. What power do you really have, Lord? You must not know what you're doing, Lord. Pharaoh's going to make a mockery of you, Lord. <coughs> the real power is coming to crush you finally, Lord. I mean, these, I'm just saying these things because these are things that we think consciously or subconsciously every day. It's evident in the things we do, mm. which begin <laughs> with the things we think. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm just running over these things so we're aware that, look, this is what we deal with every day. Hallelujah. Now, I'm saying that so that we can radically